A Legendre transformation is a way of transforming certain functions into new functions while retaining all of the information contained. As a physicist, your first encounter with Legendre transformations is probably either in thermodynamics or in theoretical mechanics. But let's first look at the purely mathematical aspects. I'm going to restrict this to differentiable functions, and although the concept is more general, in physics we're usually dealing with differentiable functions. So we start with a function f of x. We know the derivative of f with respect to x and we call it p. We would like to find a new function g of p that contains all the information contained in f of x. In other words, it has to be possible to recover f of x from g of p. So let's take a look at the function f of x equals x squared. The first derivative of this function is 2x. We can use that to draw a tangent at each point of the function f as depicted by the red line. The equation for that function is pretty straightforward. It is of course a straight line and the slope is given by the derivative of f. You may think of this as the linear Taylor expansion of the function at x0. Now take a look at this little animation that I made. It shows the tangent at all points of the curve f and I put a red dot where the tangent touches the function. Now focus on the intersection of the tangent and the y-axis. Let's highlight this intersection with a black dot. We can now compose a function by taking the x-coordinate of the red dot and the y-coordinate of the black dot, which is now shown green in the animation. The resulting function is g of x and is the Legendre transform of f. So let's write this down as a function of x. We are interested in an expression for the green curve. We said for each x-coordinate, the corresponding y-coordinate is equal to the y-coordinate of the intersection of the tangent of our original function f and the y-axis. And of course, from all tangents available, we use the one that touches f at the exact x-coordinate that we're currently looking at. So g of x equals t of 0 and x, since we evaluate on the y-axis and x0, which I use to denote the point at which the tangent is constructed, is now our variable x. This equals to f of x minus x times p. In our example, this gives minus x squared. We're not completely there yet, because the Legendre transform is always a function of a different variable than the original function, and it is in fact a function of the derivative of the original function, which we called p. So we have to express x as a function of p and put that into our expression for g. Which in our example yields minus p squared over 4. Note that to get to this x of p we had to compute the inverse of f prime of x. Now we computed the Legendre transform of our function and simultaneously derived the general expression which is g of p equals f of x of p minus x of p times p. If you look into a textbook, you might find a different expression, where signs are switched. And actually, both of these transformations do appear in physics. The one I derived is even a little less natural from a mathematical point of view, but the difference is just a minus sign. Now, I didn't choose the function x squared by accident, and as you might have noticed, there are functions for which this formalism fails. A geometric construction is possible for any function, but it doesn't actually yield the final Legendre transform, as that is a function g of p and not of x. To replace the argument x with p, we have to find the inverse of p of x, which is f prime of x. If the first derivative of f is not invertible, then f has no Legendre transform, thus f prime of x has to be a monotonic function. I wanted to start with the geometric construction, because I think it's actually insightful. But it's of course not the mathematical definition of the Legendre transformation, and we'll now attempt to construct the transformation from the exact definition. So consider a differentiable function f of x and its first derivative that we call p. The Legendre transform g of p is the function whose first derivative is, up to a sign, the inverse of the first derivative of the original function. We start by taking the total differential of g, which happens to be plus minus x dp, 
and the total differential of f, which happens to be p dx. Now we take the term p times x and compute its total differential. And note that I put a plus minus sign in front, just so that we'll get both variants of the transformation with a single calculation. Evaluating these partial derivatives gives plus minus p dx plus x dp, which when compared to the top right equations gives plus minus df plus dg. We can draw that d to the front since the total differential is linear and by comparison or integration if you will, we obtain that px equals f plus minus g and that means that g equals plus minus px minus f. So you see that what I derived geometrically was the transformation where the first derivatives are not inverse but actually minus inverse to each other. But if you study thermodynamics for instance, you'll usually encounter the transformation with a minus sign. It really depends on the application which one is used.